Welcome everyone. My name is Barbara Elman and I'm from Lincoln Center. Today we'll be turning paper into sculpture by transforming flat shapes into three-dimensional forms. For today's activity, you will need these supplies, a shopping bag, scissors, and tape. We will start by cutting four geometric shapes from an open shopping bag. I've already opened my bag up. And the shapes I'm thinking of are the shapes that are hanging above my head on the wall. A square, a rectangle, a triangle, a circle. And then I'm gonna ask you to cut one extra shape. Now I've already cut my shapes out and I wanna show you what I did. Here's my square, my rectangle, my triangle, my circle, and I'm using the handle of my bag as my extra shape. So it's kind of oval. And those are my five shapes ready to go. To make flat shapes into three-dimensional forms that have height, width, and depth, that forward back dimension, we will need to transform them. And I have three techniques, fold, pleat, and roll, that will make our shapes into three-dimensional forms. I wanna show you how easy that is to do. And the result is that the shapes will stand up by themselves. So here's an example of fold, a larger example of pleat, and here is a roll, all standing up on their own. So using the three techniques, I'm now going to take my shapes. I'm gonna fold this triangle like that. I'm going to pleat this square. And pleating is really re repetition of folding. It goes back and forth. You can make it very regular, or you could make the pleats irregular, meaning different distances apart. And pleating is really re repetition of folding. It goes back and forth. You can make it very regular, or you could make the pleats irregular, meaning different distances apart. Okay. So I'm going to take my rectangle and I'm going to roll my rectangle. So there's my tube, my roll. And I'm going to fold this handle shape. Now I'm using white tape because I want you to be able to see me, but you'll want to use clear tape. It's not as stable as some of my other shapes. And then I'm going to make this into, I'm going to roll this but I'm not gonna tape it and I'm gonna see what that's like because I think that it will be a kind of nice, soft, curvy shape. Um, some people might call it a curl as opposed to a roll, like this. And I know that this one's not gonna stand up by itself, but it still is three-dimensional. It has height, it has width, and it has depth. So those are the shapes I'm gonna use and now I need to put them together. So as I bring the shapes together, I have to make sure that my sculpture continues to balance and stand on its own. And one of the ways to do that is to let a shape that's not quite so stable um, come and join a shape that is very stable. So I'm gonna use the white tape as I go to attach one shape to another. As I work, I'm also going to be turning my sculpture around 
so I can see it from a variety of angles. So there's no front and no back to my sculpture. You want to be able to find it interesting from all sides, from all angles. That's what makes sculpture a pleasure to, to see. It's funny, I thought it was going to balance on my triangle. It's really balancing on my paper bag handle. But they're holding together. It's pretty secure. You've got to try a few things and see which suits you best. Because the shapes can go together in a variety of ways. It's got a lot of different possibilities. Looks like it's got a sun hat. You can try this sculpture making project again. Uh, I've done it three times using the same five shapes, the four on the wall behind me and the handle of my bag. Um, in this one, I used a colored marker and I drew on the flat shapes before I began assembling it. And you might want to try that too as a way of integrating whatever's on your shopping bag into your final project. Thanks for joining me. I really enjoyed making sculpture with you. I'm Barbara Elman from Lincoln Center. Keep making things.